ประเทศไทยขึ้นชื่อว่าดินแดนที่มีความหลากหลายทางชีวภาพสูงที่สุดแห่งหนึ่งของโลกเรามีทั้งพืชพันธุ์จุลินทรีย์และทรัพยากรธรรมชาติที่ประเมินค่าไม่ได้แต่ท่ามกลางศักยภาพมหาศาลนี้เรากลับมีช่องว่างขนาดใหญ่นั่นคือการลงทุนในงานวิจัยเราลงทุนเพียง 1.2% ของ GDP น้อยกว่าประเทศอื่นหลายเท่าและภาคอาหารได้รับงบประมาณเพียงเล็กน้อยจากจํานวนนั้นนี่คือช่องว่างที่รอการเติมเต็มและเป็นโอกาสครั้งสําคัญของประเทศไทยแล้วเราจะเปลี่ยนโอกาสนี้ให้เป็นจริงได้อย่างไรจุดเริ่มต้นอาจต้องกลับมาทําความเข้าใจในขุมทรัพย์ที่อยู่ในมือของเรานั่นคือความหลากหลายทางชีวภาพไทยแลนด์ is the top most uh... A country with a very high biodiversity. So we have a wide range of plants and also microbes and also other microorganisms or organisms because there are many chemical, bioactive compound nutrients that we may obtain from different organisms in Thailand. So we need to do the screening, but we need to do this is in a more effective way or rapidly. So we need to high throughput screening to know which plant, which microorganisms, or which kind of organism that we we can use for the production of bioactive compound or nutrients. At the Institute of Nutrition, we have the facilities to do this quickly, effectively. This can support how we can discover new bioactive compound. On your chemicals from our biodiversity. Example: We are also working with mushroom, and this is a mushroom is a one important fungi in Thailand, and it's also increasing trend for the research and the discovery of bioactive compounds from mushroom. For example, from lion's mane mushroom or shiitake mushroom research. Uh, Have uh, found that this is many chemicals that can have uh, anti-cancer properties or anti-neurodegenerative uh, disease. เมื่อเราค้นพบวัตถุดิบใหม่ๆและสร้างนวัตกรรมจากสิ่งที่มีอยู่แล้วโจทย์ต่อไปคือการสร้างประสบการณ์ที่ดีให้กับผู้บริโภคซึ่งหัวใจสําคัญก็คือรสชาติ Well, I think right now consumer they looking at something like alternative proteins, functional food, and many exotic foods. By the way, those kind of foods they contain sometimes of flavor or undesirable flavor. So, and while we process those kind of foods, uh, we have to think about whether we're going to handle uh, off flavor during the process or uh, after the process by uh, adding a kind of flavoring agent, something like that. So, first of all, you have to know your materials. What would be uh, t h e i r uh, off flavor or possibility to cause the off flavor during processing? And then you have to choose proper processing technique to not generate the off flavor. And on top of that, or you have to make them believe that the food, even it tastes not good, but it is very good for their health. So you have to balance between make them delicious or let people believe that this is good, even not delicious. Let's think about nampra, bala, t u a n a o and those kind of thing. They are very uh, authentic to Thai flavor. The thing is, when you process those raw materials into the products, how can you maintain their Authentic flavor. How can you uh, avoid cooked flavor that is not desirable for the products? So you have to work with the processing. For example, right now we have like high pressure processing that instead of apply a lot of thermal, a lot of heat, we apply the pressure instead, so we can kill the germ, and we can prolong the shelf life without cause the thermal degradation. Of the the composition of the raw material, I believe that first of all, make sure that quality is consistent. If we understand this, I think it would help a lot when we do the formulation, because you know every time that consumer eat our products, they expect the same thing, right? So that's why. So many times that uh, food processor manufacturer they choose to add the flavor. 
to maintain the uh, to make the flavor in every batch they produce of food products become constant. Most consumers don't en- eat enough uh, fruits and vegetables. They don't get, get the nutrition that they need, and also a lot of people don't eat enough protein or not good sources of protein. Therefore, it's important to find a sauce or magic bullet that provide them with all the nutrition that they need, all the protein requirement that they need. And that is also coupled with taste, because food, you cannot provide just nutrition, but it is the taste and the convenience that answer to their lifestyle. Wufia is a tiny plant that Thai people ate in the past. It's full of protein and nutrition, the heritage of Thai people eating this in the past. So we decided that this could be the solution for the future. However, when we started, it's, there are so many phases we had to go through. First is the cultivation, how we could cultivate woofier. Next is how to make it rich in nutrition that we really want to provide. And the third part is how do we communicate with the customers, with consumers, that this is what they want in their daily life. We had to dig into biotechnology, new um, innovative processes that allow the processing of woofia into uh, the protein and also the supplement that um, can provide the nutrition to people. For example, uh, we use uh, low temperature drying, so that allows uh, preservation of nutrients. The protein has to be digested, and a problem with plant-based protein a lot of times is the uh, indigestibility or low digestibility. So we want to make sure that the protein that people actually eat fulfill their requirement has having all the amino acids they need and actually can be metabolized by people or the consumers and be absorbed and utilized by their metabolism. Our new recent product is called Pam Cha. So Pam is uh, in Thailand, Wufia is called Pam. And now you can hear the matcha, you know, so it's Cha Min Cha, drink uh, tea. Right, so uh, we're making uh, wufia into pam cha. A lot of people eat matcha because it tastes good, and then oh, there's a lot of the green health benefits behind. So now it's the time that we're putting in uh, the plant science, the, the food science, to make wufia taste more like matcha, or not exactly in matcha, but it's getting as close uh, that people like to have it and has an identity that people like to want to drink it every day. It will be comparable to a matcha or slightly lower. Uh, because this is uh, made from Thailand, it's from using our heritage uh, sauce from the Thai ingredient. So it will be, uh, I think, accessible to most people in Thailand. And also, uh, we hope that people outside of Thailand will look at this and want to uh, import our product to their countries and have the global market as well. So as for Moo, we are the food tech startup that produces the next-gen protein from precision fermentations. First thing first will be about like customer education and awareness. When you introduce the new technology or the new ingredients, sometimes you have to you know like help educate or tell the story of what it is about, and then also um, have to make sure that the customer will also understand and be able to accept it. The second thing that I think is will be shy challenging is about like the safety, this including the regulatory approval. Anything that regarding food, people will usually um, want to ensure that it is safe to consume. That's why um, prior to launching the products, we also have to be careful and also to talk with um, relevant party, especially like those food regulators, for example, like FDA or nutritionists to ensure that we got like all necessary certification that we could like do on that. However, people doesn't want only like the Me Too product. We have to offer anything that also go beyond the expectation. Our protein can have like better nutrition, whereas they don't have to sacrifice like any of their preferent taste or their favorite product. So that could be something that unexpected um, result that people could like, you know, uh, feel as a surprise element. We have a violent shop by biodiversity, but even we have uh, a good raw materials, we always stop with that point. This is also a sticking point that we cannot uh, move further. For example, how we do with the extractions or the downstream processing, because this is um, the whole value chain. This is not start only from raw materials or from our biodiversity. We have to do the processing until end to the consumer. So this is uh, in terms of funding and facilities is uh, not yet streamlined so that we can work in this uh, seamlessly. If we start from the beginning, 
for research is the funding is always see that it should be success and immediate goal to the commercialization but actually for the discovery it should be okay to fail but normally if we say we want to get this immediate result immediate goals this always end up with low innovation because you cannot do all the things within a year fish sauce we may hear about the fish sauce that's invented in Norway fish sauce fermentation but in Norway the funding is about three years uh, they did not do only the, the fermentation they work on the quality controls and optimization so there are many steps that they uh, involved in, in, in the research. Thailand invests about only 1.2% of our GDP, but in the uh, country like uh, South Korea, in Taiwan, this is around 4 to 5%. And the food sector is only uh, 17% of what I mentioned, 1.2%. And major investment is from big company. And it means that this uh, access to the funding or investment this is uh, uh, for small and medium size, uh, it's, it's quite difficult. One point that I mentioned that about the access of a uh, small and medium sized company to the facilities, this is also the reasons that the Institute of Nutrition, we built pilot scale GMP's accredited factory so that uh, small scales or even a startup can use this facility to do the research and development for the product because it's too, it's, it's too expensive for them to invest in, in, yeah. in this. And this doing in, in a big factory is also expensive in terms of investment for the research in terms of raw materials and chemicals. But this is a scale that is, is suitable for them to work at public market testing and also launch of the product at the scale that they can sell. First, if anyone would like to get into this market, for, I think consumers, they have very strong preference to flavor. Consumer, they have their expectation. And those kind of expectations, including preferences, come from their food habit. When you say strawberry flavor, they have their own perspective of strawberry flavor in their head. And sometimes, I mean, flavor house, when they export the product to many areas, many regions, they have to formulate and make sure that the product is really matched to the preference of the consumer in that region. I think one of the challenges that you have to do R&D or R&I for your products in the area of food flavor is about the stability of the product. Just think about when you produce as the ingredient, food ingredient, it would need something like one year for the shelf life. And your ingredients must be added into the, the final product, finished good, and that would stand further for one year. So we need technology like encapsulation or formulation that reduce the risk factors of degradation, for example, light oxidation from the air. That's why packaging would also help for prolong the shelf life as well. จากความหลากหลายทางชีวภาพที่เป็นจุดแข็งของไทยนวัตกรรมของรสชาติอาหารและสตาร์ทอัพที่สร้างโปรตีนทางเลือกจากมรดกไทยจะเห็นว่าประเทศไทยมีทุกองค์ประกอบที่จะกลายเป็นศูนย์กลางฟู้ดเทคและไบโอเทคของภูมิภาคสิ่งที่เราต้องการต่อไปคือการร่วมมือระหว่างภาควิชาการภาคอุตสาหกรรมและสตาร์ทอัพพร้อมระบบทุนที่รองรับการวิจัยระยะยาวนี่คืออนาคตของการกินที่กำลังเริ่มต้นแล้ว